Was Florida doing that much damage? Because I clicked on this OPAF item. This is the stupidest item in the entire game. And the only reason it's not nerfed yet is because for some reason, people haven't figured out how insane this item is. Like, it's literally stupid. Like, everything that attacks this takes 240 pure damage. All they have to do is attack it once. It's like, if you combine- if you compare this to Blade Mail DPS, this is literally- Actually, I'm, I'm not even joking. When you compare this to Blade Mail DPS, this is like- this will do something in the realm of like eight times as much damage as Blade Mail. It's very, very dumb. When you're saying cutting some hair, how much is that? Um, okay, so every time I get bottom four, I'm thinking just like... About, uh, about this much. Like a little bit of, a little bit of hair every time we lose today. <laughs> I might have to, um... <laughs> yo, I might have to... If I'm losing too much, I'll eventually have to end my stream. <laughs> You're gonna be bald by the time I'm done with you. Yeah, we'll see. That's uh, completely different, though, from what happened this game. What happened this game happens one out of every, like, ten games, right? And that's a big difference. One out of every ten games for you to just, like, you know, heads up, play, and it kind of flips based on the item. It's very common that that happens. You were winning until you leveled up the Troll Warlord. Maybe you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> yeah. That was my issue. I don't know. I really want to get Big Bust 4. So you queued into Dum 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 from chat. Dum Dum Durum. So yeah, my tier list, you guys are using my tier list command. So far, I have only the item tier list up. And tomorrow, I will have a full team comp tier list. I, it's taking some effort to put together. Hmm. Brooch or Claymore? I don't really like Brooch in the builds I play, actually. I could actually see choosing Claymore here. I do think Brooch is a better item than Claymore, though. So two, not, two tinies and an axe is a worthwhile locks. Technically, I messed up. Technically, I was supposed to buy the axe first and get him, like, two kills on these creeps. So technically, I've only misplayed so far in this game. 100% of our decisions have been misplaced. But that's fine. I mean, it only it's, it's such an incredibly niche scenario for it to matter that axe gets those kills. It just it can't matter. I'm watching the stream wanting you to go bald, but nothing happened yet. Yeah, I might have to change the criteria. I might be a little bit too good of a player to have this, like, bottom four meme. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm gonna be... Should I make it, like, bottom five? Bottom six? What do you think? Bottom eight? Birch. Double Brooch does not feel like a good opener for my range right now. And theoretically, I should probably have Drow instead of these axes. I don't know why I put Axe in. Such a meme hero. That's a good pack. This is an interesting spot because because we have the Tiny 2, the Morphling actually represents a lot of value in these early game positions. But this forces us to choose between Drow and Tusk. And I think I actually have to choose Tusk. Which is a little sad. If Morphling was like a one cost, or if like Primordials were easier to get online, if they were more common, I would never do this. Because I'd be like, well, I'll get a Primordial sometime in the next like three rounds. But since Primordials are a little rare, I would almost never do this, by the way. This is a really unique spot. So because we have a level two tiny, that's the only reason. If this was level one, I wouldn't even think about this. And because... I don't really need just like one drow. It's a little more likely I'm in warriors than hunters this game. I think riches in three versus stone and gloves phase gets close, but I think it's still riches. I think it has to be. At least you're smart enough not to recruit Wind Ranger. Wind Ranger. It's kind of a weak pack. So we just like brooch over here, brooch over here. Tusk wants to be literally in the back row. Nah, he's getting gone on by Clop here. That's fine. I don't know. I mean, the level 2 Tiny... We, so we, we've already won this board. Level 2 Tiny with Primordial will auto-win most boards. We have already won this board, right? This is a little Munka. Okay. 
That was closer than I thought. So, what I was saying about the Morphling, the early game is all about prioritizing one-cost units. I actually can't explain how much better one-cost units are than two-cost units. They don't resell for a less amount of if gold. If you were the designer for Underlords, what would you do for seasonal mode? Different hero sets? Mutators? Different items slash spells slash passives? Seasonal mode? What do you mean seasonal mode? Is that like a confirmed thing that they're doing, or...? I don't really like this situation. This, I want a win streak, but there's literally nothing I can put in here. That's good. Um, it is confirmed for for battle pass. I think something something like that would be would be really interesting. Uh, let me think. I guess I would like the idea of something like a something like. I guess, like, I, I don't know if Mutators is what I have in mind, but something sort of similar to, like, Tavern Brawl and Hearthstone would be pretty interesting. Where it's, like, either a weekly or maybe bi-weekly or maybe monthly, like, rotating sort of thing. Um, so we want to complete up something here. We do not favor Assassins at all. This is a really chunky pack. Oh, my God. So Razor is much better here. We want to build around Drow more than anything else. CK can fit in just as like a standalone value unit here. I think that's okay. We can put the Brooch of the Aggressor on CK. His low cooldown on Chaos Bolt, five seconds, means he's gonna get off like easily two in a fight here. We're just missing this interest point. I think it is worth it to probably buy up the Bloodseeker here. Here, we? we just wanna focus on pairs. And I think we can get out of Morphling now, probably. There's nothing, I don't even like Tinker though, so. There's no reason to sell it right now. I'll probably sell to interest point next turn. The most important thing is streaking. And when you're win streaking, you want to be very careful about what's what's going on here. So we got to look at these other top boards. Specifically, holy shit. Yeah, that's pretty good. Triple chain mail, dude. I can't I can't beat that board. My board's good, but I can't beat triple chain mail. So here is a second drow and a round seven Medusa. Round seven Medusa is not as good as it sounds at all. Ugh, gross. I mean, so, A, can we get to interest point? Yes, we can. B, can my board get stronger? No, it can't, which means we get to this interest point. Selling everything that's not paired to the board. We'll pair the Drow, and I guess I'll take the Medusa. I mean, it's gonna... So the thing about Hunters is... Early 4 tier units are gold bait? Yes, kind of. Basically, yeah. They're really expensive. They're not really that good on your board early. They're usually like scale off of items and stuff a little bit better. You know, of course we queue into the high roller with uh, three chainmail warriors. I wonder if three chainmails is even proper to pick. It doesn't sound right. Like it depends what he saw, but after the after the second one, even after the first one, you start lowering your value on them. I mean, a level 2 is just better than a level 1, right? His DPS is 56 at level 2? It's actually unbelievable. We're just hitting this interest point. There's kind of no way we can hit the next interest point. <laughs> you got fucking Shadow Shaman, dude. I knew it was low. I didn't realize it was literally that low. Chaos Knight at level 1 has literally 100 DPS with Demon Passive. Level 1 Chaos Knight does literally double the damage of level 2 Shadow Fiends. Holy shit. Did it quick select that? You click it and you press E. See you later, dude. Good luck on your Big Boss 4 quest. Hopefully I won't need it. So, we're not on a streak right now. I do like the ability to play for interest here. The question is, do we sell up to Medusa? Selling Medusa does feel kind of bad. I think in this case, I will just level here. So 
So we want these CKs to kind of just jam up the same things. We kind of want them to roam together. So we'll slide them together here, and we just want them to just double pummel the tiny here. And the game is all about, like, forcing your opponent to attack your big chunky dude. It's like, it's just controlling targeting, right? It's like we force the opponent to attack the big level 2 tiny. The tiny has primordial and it has brooch. Brooch is not really inherently defensive on most units, but on tiny, it means he gets tossed faster, which means he, stay li see, he stays alive longer. He gets the sun probably twice, even though he gets powered down. So we just want them to attack this, and once they're engaged on this, then our DPSs come in from the side, and they want to focus the same thing, right? They just want to be attacking the same thing, and then they're good. So this is another very interesting spot. Because here, I want to hit this interest point. I think the Juggernaut is easily worth taking. This is really bizarre. I'm actually going to sell both of the CKs to hit this interest point. Like that. It's just a mistake to buy these during the creep rounds. So even though Juggernaut's nice, my board just got a lot tighter, right? Because we have a level 2 to shove in here, this Bounty Hunter is going to do more than a level 1 CK, just because he's level 2. And we're getting this as well, right? We don't want to sell out of Medusa yet. The CKs did well for us for a while, but this is the turn where we don't want them anymore. You have to hit the interest points, especially on the creep rounds. It's just so much more worth it. Now, I don't want this Medusa on my board. Uh, is Coordinated Assault actually better than Chainmail? I can use this in both comps in my range. Is it actually better than Chainmail? So early, early Dusa is not the most like amazing thing. 55 DPS. But it's got split shot, so it's kind of like a lot more than 55. Three arrows, three additional I'm arrows, right? Which means it's kind of like actually over 100 DPS, sort of. I see you value according to salt quite a bit. Is it actually good? Uh, I buy it a lot when my range is two out of the three comps I can use it in. I mean, it's pretty good, yeah. It's a tier two. I don't know. I mean, I picked it twice in two games because I got offered shit alongside it. I don't really value it that high. It's solid, but it's not like it's not one of the nutty tier two options. You really need to run this in like ranged comps. It's okay in warriors. I'm not actually sure how I feel about running coordinated assault in hunters and not pairing the trolls. I think it's a good comp. When you get coordinated assault and you're in hunters, which we might be here, I'm not sure. It's just an interesting situation, I guess. Is this worth it? How dumb was that, I wonder? It's a lot of attack speed. I mean, that's literally worth four gloves of. It's worth five gloves of haste at the start of the fight. No, it's worth more. It was worth like six or seven gloves of haste. That's a lot of attack speed. That's literally like, for the first few attacks in the fight, it was worth one additional unit basically chunking. It's quite good. I don't really mind Shadow Fiend. There's some reality where this fits in. I don't really think it's possible though. Yeah, it's not possible. Finding an early troll warlord looks good though. How come you didn't rate tribals like Coordinated Assault or Final Flash? Because tribals can't really be rated. I mean, I can tell you how good each comp is, and I can tell you which tribals fit into which comps. And from that, you can extrapolate how good the tribal is. I mean, if I rate tribals, you have no idea whether I'm that, whether that rating is coming from the alliance being good or the actual tribal being good. There's just no way. There's there's no way to distinguish between those. Not. Not on a tier list like that. It's the same reason that I didn't rate heroes. I, I think tier or hero lists are literally completely useless in this video game. Like, the game is too situational. Different heroes are good. Heroes and alliances are only as good as the comps that they enable. So, like, if I make a tier list, and if I say Pudge is, like, the best hero in the game, he's good because he, he's part of, like, three of the top five comps in the game. But... 
as a standalone unit, he's not like you wouldn't just shove him in randomly. And there's kind of it's not really easy to communicate that in something like a tier list. Like it just seems pretty useless. So I'm still not really sure what I'm in yet. I'm pretty evenly geared towards hunters and warriors right now, which is pretty standard for, you know, these last like 24 hours I've been playing with like a two comp range, just trying to force one or the other. And we're just chilling. Hopefully I don't lose my streak here. Vils. Yeah, we should beat him, right? Tidehunter's good in any comp though. Hard disagree. I think there's almost, I mean, I don't understand why people like that hero, honestly. I really don't. I've, I've, like, there's only a few games where I've actually played that hero. Like, I run him in Hunters, sometimes. Have you ever played Dota 2? Yeah. I have like 10,000 hours. Which is honestly not that much for a Dota 2 player. Especially nowadays, because I quit playing like four years ago. But when I was playing, 10,000 hours was like fairly respectable. So let's see what perk we get from this. We do have Gift, which is nice. Embarrassment of Riches. Gift is going to give us maybe an extra choice. If I get the Hunter perk from this, I'm very happy. If I get the Naga perk, I'm very happy. What is your MMR? Back in the day, it was like 5.5. Which was good once upon a time. I promise. I promise it was, it was pretty okay back then. What position in Heroes did you prefer? I was mostly a bottom. I don't know. I played a lot of mid when I was messing around, but I mostly main support. Pocket sand. Teehee. So mask is the best thing here. We don't need two bridge of the aggressors. And mask is better in hunters than warriors because troll on mask is not really that good. It is kind of unfortunate we lost our streak, though. This is I could, moment. I could just run all three hunters. What's the DPS increase of this? It's not really that good, right? This is like assassins. Why are six hunters even good? This perk kind of blows. 20% chance of quickly performing two attacks. So isn't this like less than 20% DPS increase? Gives mana faster. I guess it gives mana a bit faster than something like the crit chance. Because of Drow? Yeah, I guess. It's 20% DPS increase. Pretty sure it's like 15. I'll hit my mark. So now we can take out Troll for Beastmaster and Medusa in this case. Medusa can use this. We can get out of Witch Doctor. I don't think we're ever using Witch Doctor anymore. Beastmaster is pairing here where it counts. Um, the Orcs, which is kind of neat. And then we're just kind of in Hunters, it looks like. I don't know. I feel like Warriors do probably better for me than Hunters. It does feel like Warriors are kind of a tier or half a tier above Hunters. Am I cheating by watching a stream? No, no, you can you can watch my stream, Bills. Of course not. Six Hunters blow, just play three. Oh, it's possible. It is very possible. I mean, Six Hunters might kind of need the perk to make sense, right?
literally 20% increase to DPS. All hunters have a 20% chance of quickly performing two attacks. Should be like somewhere between 15 and 20%, right? I do kind of want to try this variant of Hunters, I guess. I'm coming for you. My positioning is a little awkward. So the Hunters with coordinated assaults, I do think makes some sense. Six attacks for every five means one fifth more. But it's not six for every five. I mean, it takes time to attack. What do you mean? Your proc can proc an attack. I guess like 17 or 18 percent. That would make the most sense to me. You won't regret this. This looks good. <laughs> So we've got basically, we need to just like, so we're in a weird situation where we're just like gathering around these other things, right? Basically. So here's where we're at. We're basically just trying to gather around both auras. Now I think Drow has more attack speed, attack range than Troll. So I should have Troll one step forward. And Troll's also tankier just cause he's picking up the warrior perk. So the interesting thing about six hunters is it does flex to one warrior. I do think I want to stop forcing Hunters so much though. I think this was a game where we could have gone Warriors instead. It's just Mask and Coordinate Assault and Dedusa all like gear us towards Hunters. I shouldn't weigh these equally though, because Warriors is better than Hunters. Mask Control? Um, could put Mask Control, I guess. Uh, it's probably a bit better on Troll. Yeah. So it should be switched like that, basically. And now we're mostly looking to get our 6th Hunter online, which means Marana, effectively, is going to be the one that we're going to find first. We're on 8. Once we find Marana, then we can maybe think about going to 9. Hunters is very dependent on level 9. I don't know, there's a consideration to try to literally force 9 right now. That might lose me the game. I think that's a pretty weak consideration. Hmm. Force level 9. Lose the video game. It increases my outs. I don't know. Normal builds don't want to go to level 9 early. Level 9 is kind of a noob trap. But this is a build that I think I actually could. What is coordinated assault synergized with hunters? So auras are about empowering ranged units. Because melee units can't clump for auras. Hunters are damage based. And they have a warrior flexible slot. So now we have Retaliates, which means we might have to double dip into this Warrior Flex slot. I mean, something like a Tidehunter doesn't want to hard tank because he'll lose his ability. Unfortunately, we find the Tidehunter here. I say unfortunately. I mean, I guess that's pretty good. So I offer my Tidehunter as a tribute. Go, Nagas. We could just let Retaliate carry us, right? I think that works. Bridge of the Martyr is pretty good with Tidehunter. Unfortunately, my units are all like level 1. We did find the Tide super early. I don't know, this is kind of a weird spot. I think because we're on the Slaughter out. We're too close to outs to not roll a little bit. Like, our units are all like the one star. That needs to change, I think. Troll upgrade would be nice. I think you never pair trolls in this version of playing. Stop saying Nagas, you might get banned from Twitch. I mean, only if I slip up. I think I actually will just level up. 
I don't know, how ballsy is this? There's certainly some amount of balls associated with this play. Eh, we're on a lose streak though. We actually gain money by having balls. That's fine. The most important thing is, like, getting three warriors online is actually quite neat. There was some consideration to run Juggernaut instead of Tiny just to pair Orcs, but as soon as we get Marana, Beastmaster's gone. And additionally, Tiny's really good, and Juggernaut's kind of shit. So, this does just make more sense. Yeah, we're good. So we'll just take the take the greedy level 9, and now we're going to greed up even more with interest. I'm probably not even going to spend it below 50 before 26. And it's really important to play greedy. Like, don't don't panic and, like, get afraid at low health. Look at these guys down here. They're playing well. You guys can't see the gold, but Vils is at 53 gold. Dum Dum's at 50 gold, and they're both at, like, 30 health. This guy's at 39. Like, that's kind of how you want to be playing. You see bad players will get, like, to 30, and they'll just burn through all their interest, and they'll finish, like, 6th. It's not what you want to do. So here's Marana, which is a nice upgrade to Beastmaster here. I'm never building Be I'm never building Beastmaster again, so I can just sell this. Beastmaster can replace either Marana or Tide Hunter for a while, or if he goes into level three, like three star, it could be the best thing to do. Show DPS of how much Retaliate did. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll show in like an actual fight scenario. Uh, second Medusa is sweet. We also want Medusa to be like closer to the front as well. I do think 6 Hunter is, honestly, it feels more and more like, kind of like a tier 2 build, at best. Which isn't necessarily bad, it's just like, it's not great either. Sagan and I will fight for you. So our outs have increased by 2 just off the back of that pack alone. Um, so the value of our rolling becomes very high, our outs just equalize... <laughs> Because <clears throat> Troll out closed and Sniper out opened. Uh, so here's the Medusa upgrade. And now I have to feel pretty good about this. We could have afforded losing one more, but I'm at the point of health where I actually want to treat my health uh, like a resource. I actually want to like just keep my health alive. Make it make it good. This is our moment. So this is fine. Uh, you do want warriors like splitting up here. If we need to sell up to interest, we can sell our tiny. This guy's got a beast that tiny. That's kind of spooky. Huge boat. I mean, double double fisting these auras like we're doing is pretty good. Um, but this guy did just out DPS us. So we did kind of burn through that interest uh, a little bit aggressively. Might have saved a little bit of health just by like losing less hard. I think that was actually a lot of health we saved, and that's fine. These Marana arrows. Yeah, it does feel like Marana arrow is super unreliable in these late game fights. I do think this, this here is probably the takeout for Beastmaster. If you go Beastmaster level 3. Six Hunter is 1.45 times damage, including chance to proc off itself. Is it? 1.45 times damage? I mean, that's probably a decent estimation. Isn't Kunkka better than that Slardar? No. Slardar is top fracking. Retaliate's completely busted. So we'll we'll do like DPS charts after this. Honestly, all I need is a second Retaliator again. That's a large rip. I actually am forced to choose Maelstrom. Like I said, this item blows. Don't take it. We do have like really good attack speed though on some of these units. We are blessed. I don't really want to run a second Medusa. I think I should just sell out of this. There's kind of no way it could be proper to have a second Medusa here. These rolls are not favoring me very well. It's five dead rolls. Someone did their homework. Hmm. Yeah, that's no good, dude. 
we're on a lot of outs. We've got Kanka as an out, Sniper as an out, Slaughter as an out, Windrunner. Got a lot of improvements to make to this board. But we're actually just going to get blown out really early. We might lose some hair from this game. <laughs> Give it to the troll. Um, I think troll really wants Mask of Madness. Could be mistaken though. Yeah, I guess I could actually give it to the troll. Check Windrunner damage. Yeah. Maelstrom is doing like 1400 here. I wonder if it is better on troll. Mask to draw mail on troll. Because troll's attack rate does eventually ramp up quite well. You can see slaughter is damaged. It's only a thousand at level one slaughter, which is pretty bad. I don't know, the thing is, like, the life leech actually does well on troll being kind of in frontline on, like, uh, drow. Like, the lifesteal on drow just kind of does nothing. The troll does benefit from the attack speed as well, whereas the drow doesn't benefit from the attack speed. I think this item combination is better, honestly. I think these items are where they want to be. Unfortunately, I can't sell a single thing on my bench. There's a consideration to sell out of both drows there, but I don't really like that. There's the consideration that I might have taken, which is sell tiny for a kanka up to that interest point. And in this case, we would have gotten rewarded for doing that. So we can see here, because now we have the kanka here instead. Um, we're on too many outs to not be rolling still. Pretty ridiculous. That's a big out. Now if I sell the tiny, we hit the interest points. If we win, and we look pretty good, so let's just go ahead and try to beat these positions. So this guy's cornered across from us. I think this this position with Slardar and Tidehunter is pretty good. So you can see the Slardar's damage here. Slardar deals 3,000 damage at the start of the fight. Now that he's level 2, I have to feel pretty good about this one. I don't know, maybe 6 Hunters do suck. It's like 50% DPS increase for 6. Has it been like totally 100% confirmed that the extra hits can proc more extra hits? Is that even confirmable? I slaughtered doing that much damage. Because I clicked on this OPAF item. This is the stupidest item in the entire game. And the only reason it's not nerfed yet is because for some reason, people haven't figured out how insane this item is. Like, it's literally stupid. Like, everything that attacks this takes 240 pure damage. All I have to do is attack it once. It's like, if you, combi if you compare this to Blade Mail DPS... This is literally... Actually, I'm, I'm not even joking. When you compare this to Blade Mail DPS, this is like, this will do something in the realm of like eight times as much damage as Blade Mail. It's very, very dumb. Sniper and Windrunner would be swapped. He keeps Sniper in back because Windrunner in back because he has a Maelstrom. Um, yeah, I could I could see that swap. I think that's I think that's a minor improvement to this board, sure. So round 30, we're just like playing for Econ again. Slaughter level 3 is part of our win condition, I guess. The most important thing is upgrading like either Windrunner or Sniper. We do want one of these to go uh, to go up well. Let's have a look. Like, you know, you always want to be using your time as a resource. Let's have a look at these positions and see if this guy's changing anything. So this Hunter guy is swapping to the other side. So he's going vertical to me, um, which is an interesting change. I'm pretty sure we beat him vertical to vertical pretty confident so I'm not gonna worry about that at all this guy's on assassins um, I think we might possibly want to respect assassins with our positioning and I'm not too sure exactly how I might want Medusa a little further back in this case so assassins will be more likely to go on Medusa there Medusa having no damage item is a little bit awkward I'll just go Daedalus here right I don't know the, the mana item on Deuce is kind of neat, but it's not like the most neat thing in the universe, right? 
Oh, I was supposed to buy the Slardar, I guess. It doesn't really matter, though, right? And here, there's one upgrade, and I think we're fine. We can just chill here. If we get an attack speed item, it does really well in Sniper. You want attack speed items on Sniper, so it's really, really pretty simple formula. Attack speed literally just multiplies this number right here, damage, and any, like, on-proc effects. Um, damage gets multiplied by attack rate. Windrunner has a really high natural attack rate, but also watch this number. Shouldn't it change to reflect the auras? Because it's picking up both the Troll Aura and the Drought Aura. So she's actually attacking 45% faster than that. So she's attacking about 1.6 times a second with Maelstrom. Which is pretty neat. Even though Maelstrom sucks. Does Daedalus work on the multi-shot? No. But the plus damage does. You can check out this uh, DPS charts here. And as we can see, um, a Slarda fell off. Wait, why didn't Slarda do that much damage there? What the heck? Can Medusa proc multiple Maelstroms on one attack? No. Medusa's split shot interacts with nothing. There's no items it interacts with except for plus damage items. Plus damage is the only way to abuse this. That being said, I think um something like something like uh I guess honestly because I have scaled, I could actually go to ten. I think going to level ten actually before rolling might make more sense. This is a weird spot. We I think that makes sense together. though. So, this is the guy, uh, Hochi. Oh, this is the other Hunter player. It's not the guy who went vertical against us. This guy's still diagonal to us. So, let's see how this goes. Um, oh, he actually beat us. So, we're going to lose a little bit of health here in our streak. We're still not at one-shot range, I think. Oh, no, we're in one-shot range. We're on the edge of it. And we could actually finish seventh if we get one shot. So, we really have to respect this. I don't like respecting this. But we'll level to ten here and spend all of our gold. The total health in the game is like getting below 100 anyway, so this is kind of the point of the game. You don't want the gold. I want to roll on level 10. Upgrading Tidehunter would be a big deal. I'm going to start buying Slardars because getting a second Slardar in here would be good. I don't think there's really anything else I'm looking for. It's like Windrunner is nice. Just like really just want more of these. Um, this is bad. New bow, new quiver, time to get to work. Huh. That was fairly bad for a 10 unit upgrade. That's not really what I wanted to see there. I'm basically Gyro completing Deadeye is not the worst thing ever. I could have put another Tidehunter in, I guess. Tidehunter level 1. Yeah, I guess that's probably better, right? Yo, Venenifer TV. Welcome to the 1-8th Gate Club, man. I just won an Underlords tournament with two Retaliate 6 Hunter build. Got 50 bucks thanks to you. Now I have enough money to sub to you. Ah, the circle continues. <laughs> no problem, man. Hopefully, I mean, I just want people to realize how stupid this item is so that Valve nerfs it. It's really dumb. I mean, there's no way we can't just run both Tidehunters, right? I don't think 15 is one-shot range for this lobby, so I think we can sell the Euro. I think we can play for interest ranges, and then I think we can spend down on 36 after the creep round. So the most important thing is we respect this guy's position. Yeah, this guy, this Hunter guy that beat us last time. We've got two Tidehunters, but they're going to have such a hard time getting their ability off here. I don't know. Retaliate really is dumb. That's great. So we just knocked out Dum Dum. And now, you know, I, I mean, you, you guys can see, I think a lot of the late game, if you guys want to improve your late game, which is round 21 plus, the best way to do that is by basically just abusing creep rounds. Think about it like this, like I, like I keep saying, round 34 is double interest. Double interest. So if we hit this interest point, we get like two or three gold instead of one, right? Which is really nice because we have the free creep round. Which means we can sell these drows. And instead of having zero gold interest, we get three. So it's triple interest in this case because it compounds, right? And then we'll have 20 gold to spend down and look for the Tidehunter upgrade. And Tidehunter upgrade might help us win this game. I think there's a good chance our board wins anyway, but let's look at positioning and figure out how to beat this guy. Uh-oh. Dude, he's doing it too. Oh shit, did we lose? 
He has it too. That's not fair. <laughs> hmm. Two dooms? I can't I can't actually use two dooms, can I? It's moonshard, right? Moonshard on sniper is pretty nuts DPS. Guys, it's not another maelstrom. Stop saying maelstrom. That's not good. Are we... Okay, so we're against the Hunter guy. I think we can beat this guy. So, like I said, Sniper really benefits from something that gives him attack speed with his high damage. And Windrunner really benefits. Windrunner and Medusa both have good damage multipliers. Windrunner because she has high attack speed. And Medusa because she uh, has the damage multiplier. So, this guy just repelled my army. I'm happy if we get second in this game all of a sudden. Madrona has high speed, not damage. Did I say that wrong? And at this point, the game is just closing out so fast. I think I can survive for one fight. My positioning is not perfect here. We just need to spread retaliate. Oh my god, his retaliate is destroying me, dude. Uh, this could be 15. Oh! Dude, what is happening this game, guys? Oh, he's out! It's just me against the hunter! We're good! Wait, but he just beat him. Hello! So the hunter, he's not pairing humans, so we don't have to worry about silence. He's got his slardar. He's got two retaliates?! I can't win against that! I lost! That's not fair! <laughs> Gotta get Ravage. It's not like in range enough. Dude, Jesus! Two retaliates! What the hell? God! All these net deckers, dude. Okay, he's out. We're good. Not really, retaliate's super busted. I'm serious. If you see this item, you pick this item. Like, <laughs> like, it's so stupid. There were four retaliates in that game. And all four of the retaliates in that game belonged to the top three players. So... I don't know. I mean, does it mean anything? Big Boss 4? I think if we get first place next game, we're Big Boss 4.